Welcome to our best and worst rap discographies tier list and guys this is an iconic video that we already did on the channel at some point but a lot has changed since the last time that we've done it so we decided to do a 2024 edition. Guys let us know in the comment section where we get it right where we get it wrong and you know how would you guys grade these catalogs because at the end of the day it's all subjective but Lou what are you looking for let's say when you're going to be looking at these catalogs? I mean I'm just looking at the quality of the albums and looking at the consistency obviously the amount of classic albums some of these artists have like five some of them have zero so it's <laughs> going to be interesting to see where they all place but it's fun to do this again because we brought in a few artists that we brought into the last tier list but some of them were actually most of them all dropped at least one more album since we ranked them originally and then the other artists are all new artists okay, that we've so never ranked. So let me ask you this, all right? With that being said, um, a, a lot of these artists did drop one more album in their discography. How much of a change does that make, let's say, from the previous rankings? So for example, let's start off with Kanye West. That's the perfect example, right? Back when we did this, I believe we gave it the perfect rating, considering we that did. It's, it's the best hip-hop discography of all time. Now looking at the Vultures run... Do you put it down to amazing? Do you keep it at perfect? It's still the best catalog, at least solo catalog in hip-hop history. I also want to say this, is that I feel like we were handing out perfects, like handing out fucking candy on Halloween. Like, we were way too generous with some of the ratings. With Kanye, I stood by it at the time. We didn't get Vultures 1 or Vultures 2 at that moment in time. We never got a bad Kanye West album. Even, if, even Jesus is King had so many highlights and showed us this new era and sound for Kanye. So um, that wasn't enough to knock it. But I think we finally have reached that point, bro. You think so? I, I think that like even his five or six classic albums can't save him from not having the amazing rating right now just because how could you call something perfect when you have like very obviously bad albums within that catalog? That's true. Like I, I agree with you that like he deserves to be in the highest tier there is. But that being said, the name of our tier is perfect. You know what I mean? Like it's not it's like hard. an S tier. Like this is does the, he the get, tier is okay, called on, wait, perfect. Wait, wait, wait. Does he get away with it? Because it's collaboration albums. Does that the art is that the argument we want to make for today? We're gonna put some for, asterisks next to it. But now? for me, it's like, dude, like this is the best catalog that we have on this list for today. It is, but it's not a perfect catalog. Like, like, like I said, if we were to organize our tier list in a different way where it wasn't called the perfect tier, I'd be cool with putting it in the highest tier. But this is literally called the perfect tier. He doesn't have a perfect discography. And maybe no artist does. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to see as we go through. Okay, fine. Maybe no artist today is going to have a perfect. But you see, like, the Vultures run is definitely a big taint. It's a big taint in yeah. the armor, especially when you're getting something like Vultures 2 that was incomplete. Um, I feel like, like you said, he has the five classics, um, some of the most revolutionary material that's ever come out of hip-hop music, one of the greatest, you know, um, artists that's ever blessed this genre. But at the same time, it's like, you're right. You know, like, how are you going to do it? You yeah, can't you coin can. something perfect if you have duds like that. And even at that, like, we were lenient because there was still Jesus is King in there. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's a bad or mediocre album. I really, I love the production, as you guys know. But at the same time, it's like, there's a couple of projects in there. Okay, I think Amazing's uh, a Kanye fair rating. going down to the Amazing in 2024. Um, next up, we have Drizzy Drake. And the last time around, he was placed into that great column. And since then... We got the release of For All the Dogs. Yeah. And that ended up being the worst album um, that he's ever put out. We've said time and time again how it felt like he was trying to, of course, cater to every side of his fan base, like he's been doing with the previous albums. Um, you know, working with artists that are rising on the scene and not really getting that true essence of a Drake album where he's really passionate and where he's. Um, continuing the groundbreaking R&B and hip hop blend that you saw with his earlier projects, you know, like it, it it felt like he was riding some more trends this time around with that album. And looking at the grand scope of things, it's not enough to make it just a good catalog. No, you know, we're not sure, gonna Drake bring has, it down. Drake to has tier. a great catalog. Yeah, Drake has a great catalog. Three classic albums, or should I say, two classic studio albums. And uh, an iconic and classic mixtape for me, at least with If You're Reading This Is Too Late. Um, great collaboration album with Her Loss. Um, you could say one of the most culturally important, like, let's say, hip-hop albums and groundbreaking albums with views for 2016. Like, that was a huge fucking album, and I think people are starting to see the value of it, at yeah. least now in 2024. Um, looking at even gems like Dark Lane demo tapes and more life, like, even the projects that have a looser feel to them um, have stood the test of time. 
looking at something like So Far Gone, you know, people consider that to be a classic mixtape, right? And something that really um, stood the test of time, even after maybe, what, 15 years of it being out. So when you look at all of that, um, he has groundbreaking albums, he has classics, he had consistency. Um, I think that he's just, he's gone into a poor little form right now, and that's pretty much it. But I keep it at great. Yeah, I would keep it at great. I think that if we went all the way from so far gone till more life there'd be an argument to be made for amazing but it's really the second half of the career and catalog that weighs it down for me more than anything even if else, you ended you at dark lane demo tapes dark lane yeah. demo because realistically scorpion for me I, I find it a great album i, I really enjoy it it's, i really it's a good do. album to me it's not great but um yeah all, all right. right kendrick lamar um so I, i'm not sure if mr morale had come out at the time that we um ranked him in our other tier list, but regardless, um, he's still on his run, still on the run. He's still yet to make a mediocre album, which he's is still, he's still yet to make a good album. Yeah. I could go on a limb and say that section 80 is a great, is a great or amazing project. And you, and we also gave Mr. Morale an amazing rating. It is an um, amazing album. Yeah. It's one of the best albums of the decade. Then you have two perfect albums with Tim Butterfly and good kid, Matt city. I think when you break it down, Classics, yes. Consistency, yes. One of the best that the genre's ever seen, yes. More. Listen to this. More consistent than Kanye West at this point, but Kanye has not more. many classics. No. Nah, so it's like no, Kendrick has three classics. Okay, and Kanye has what five or six? Five. It's not that far off though. It's almost that, double the yeah, amount. but at that point, like who else in the genre could say that they have three classic albums? It's tough. That's a tough. I'm just saying for the for the classic conversation. Obviously, Kanye gets him. But when you look at it from a total point of view, he has the classics conversation. He has the 10 on 10 masterpieces. He has the best album of all time in that catalog, in my opinion, at least. He has the consistency. So factor. Kendrick has a better catalog than Kanye West. At this point in time, I can make the argument. <sighs> but, but we said that uh, it's, it's, the, it's the virtue of the tier list. Like, wh what's the nitpick with his catalog? There isn't. There isn't one. I mean, What's the e even just the evolution from album to album um, has been incredible to witness, bro. Even looking at Entitled and Mastered, we've said time and time again how even though that felt like, you know, a continuation of Timid Butterfly and um, that jazz funk fusion that he brought to that era, it's still better than most albums and most rappers catalogs. Like, it's just it's of that level. So, listen, I could go with Amazing just because. Is it really a flawless catalog where every album is perfect, 10 on 10? Not necessarily. Like, where are you going to get a better catalog, bro? You're not going to get a... Like, we can eh, give it to Kendrick. I'm not mad at giving it like, to Kendrick. It's, it's between him and Kanye for the best catalogs. Yeah. At least based on what we have here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm okay with putting it in amazing just because, again, not every album is flawless, but I guess it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. But I'm just saying, like, consistency, you have to break it down by criteria. Consistency, he has it. Classics, he has it. Um, quality, he has it. He he knocks off every single, it's a perfect catalog. It's a per Not every song is going to be. Um, not every the, album's perfect. That, that, th that's there you it comes go, down for to. anyone, yeah. But that's a perfect catalog in my eyes. All right, we'll go with perfect for Kendrick. I, 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 think I, I don't yeah, mind. For sure. It has uh, to be Again, perfect. to me, Kanye West still has the best catalog in hip-hop history. Um, even if it's tainted, but we'll see. Kendrick still has more time to go, right? That's like it. maybe in his later years, he'll continue the consistency or maybe he'll have a bit of a drop off. We'll see. But you're right. At the current time, you could argue that Kendrick has the better discography. But let's go on to J. Cole. And with J. Cole, a lot of people are split on the catalog. Some people think it's a little bit overrated. Some people claim that he doesn't even have a classic album, which is absolute blasphemy to me when you're looking at the impact that 2014 had on the hip hop game. Um, even something like Friday Night Lights, people consider that a classic mixtape. Yeah. So you have classic mixtapes. His cla his mixtape catalog is really what adds a ton of value for me here. There's not a lot of people that have released mixtapes like him. That's number one. Two, the only weak project that I could really be like, okay, it's a good album, is the Sideline Story. Sideline Story and um, KOD, I guess, isn't up to par with... For Your Eyes Only or 2014 For Your Hills Drive. Still a solid album for, for 2018. And I just don't think that one's aged in, the best. In my opinion, For Your Eyes Only is a classic concept album. 2014's in that catalog. The off season is aging as one of the best listens of the 2020s decade. 
It's tough. It's like, again, I go with the greats here with J. Cole. I, I, I think, I'd go with the greats I, I think well. he has a great catalog. Yeah. I think that, yeah, there's obviously albums that maybe weigh it down a tad. But we'll see with the offseason. If the offseason comes out and then he has like a three, he has a three run of like 2014, free rise only, and then after that, the fall off, excuse me. It's a crazy three stack. That's a three well, no, it, it would be it would be KOD off season. No, but I mean like just the three best like albums in his catalog. Okay, I see what you're saying. Like, there's very few catalogs that are. So gonna let be me able ask you this that. before we move on to Travis. Um, what puts, what doesn't put J Cole above Drake's catalog for you? Like, what well, what makes it on equal playing fields for you, or is it maybe slightly above but not quite amazing? You can make the argument that nothing was the same and take care. And if you're reading this too late, is maybe, you know, the th- strongest that run. three album run. Yeah. You, it, could, it, you could also argue that, like, because we got more volume from Drake, you have more great albums from Drake in a sense. Yes, but I do appreciate the time that Cole's taken. Again, For sure. It, like, I still think I have Cole's catalog over Drake's, maybe in some conversations. Yeah. It depends the way you want to look at it. But at the end of the day, to me, it's like it's even playing field with I both agree. their catalogs. I agree. Okay, J. Cole gets the great. Next up, Travis Scott. This is someone else who, just like Kendrick, since he came onto the scene, he's never really missed. You can count Al Faro as one of those albums where he was still trying to find his sound. Yeah, but I'm going to count that, though. I For wanna, sure yeah, you're going to count we, that. We need to yeah. count that. Um, DBR, incredible mixtape. You know, that was revolutionary for the mixtape scene. Rodeo, one of the better debut albums of the 2010s decade. Classic to both of our eyes. You look at something like Astroworld, groundbreaking album. Birds in the Trap sing McKnight, fantastic album full of replay value. Utopia, one of the biggest and culturally most important hip hop albums of the 2020s decade. Yeah. This guy hasn't missed. This guy hasn't like really Literally like, never he, missed. He's been upping his game since DBR. I feel like Astroworld maybe you could say is like the peak, quote unquote. Like that's gonna be like yeah, I wouldn't say upping his game with every album though. Like Birds in the Trap sing McKnight was just a reminder. Of- I just think for like. L- looking at the way that his music has evolved, he's always tried to push himself to create mm-hmm. better music. You know, I'm not saying... Okay, so maybe let me retract that. I don't think you could say that the quality has gotten better and better and better just from like a pure like hip-hop technical standpoint, but it feels like he's always trying to push something new he is. with what he's creating. And that's something that I really enjoy from his music, right? Even Utopia, like that was a big risk for him, right? Because if that would have flopped, bro, that would have been a huge... Like, I mean, a huge fucking disappointment for the hip-hop community. A lot was riding on that album. You got a shitty Utopia album. Think about where we'd, where we'd be right now, dude. You would have had nothing. You would have had nothing from 2023. That would have been a whole year gone out the drain. So, I don't know. I'm looking at the great category once again. I'm looking at the the, the great tier once again. I think that Al Faro um, obviously knocks it down a little bit. Birds in the Trap sing McKnight felt sort of like Travis just having fun and giving people something to hold on to. Um, in the meantime, for Astral World, and even when I look at, let's say, an album like Utopia, um, it, it's not a perfect album. Like, you could argue that the only perfect album that Travis has, at least in my opinion, would be a Rodeo. Um, but you still have songs in there that kind of knock it down a bit. Like, a Flying High, that's not a perfect song. Overrated song. I mean, sorry, underrated song. Anyway. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Travis in the great as well. Let's go on to Eminem, and we've had the death of Slim Shady since the last time that we ranked him. W. Um, and I believe we had put Eminem, if I'm not mistaken, in the amazing tier. Um, you have to fact check me on that one. But the reason being for that was a case where the highs are so damn high that you didn't want to place him anywhere below that just because of him having one of the best three album runs in hip hop history. Um putting out one of the best collab albums in our opinion in hip-hop history with how the sequel that weighs in this as well uh, and ultimately i mean it's really a case of how much is this second half of eminem's career gonna weigh down the rating like that that's what it comes down to because we know that like even if we enjoyed the death of slim shady on some level or their songs off of kamikaze that um, really shook up the game and reminded people what amazing lyricism was and how it was lacking like sure there's highlight moments in these projects but he's never touched the graces that he did early on in his career and i feel like he's kind of just reached that roadblock since um 2013 you could argue well how the sequel um like you had said though i want to give credit to relapse i want to give credit also to recovery I, i think there's a lot of underrated value within um, the middle point of his catalog, like you said, towards the latter, like half of it, yeah, you can make the argument that um, it, it took a, a steep, like you know, sort of decline. But at the same time, 
I have arguably the best three album run of all time in there. Mm-hmm. It's not perfect. It's like, but do you think that Cole Travis and Drake have a better catalog than Eminem? Cole Travis and Drake. I think that Travis has, um, like, I don't think he has albums that are impact wise the level of Eminem or even just as great as all around albums, right? Like when I'm looking at an all around hip hop album, I'm looking at the rapping meaning a lot. I'm looking at the production value. I'm looking, I'm factoring in everything. That being said, um, yeah, Travis and J. Cole and Drake do not have that three album run. Only maybe Kanye West and Kendrick arguably do from the people we have on today's list. That being said, it's just the consistency weighs it down so much. Yes, but is it enough to knock it down two points, right? Because it has the influence, it has the quality, it has the masterpieces, it has the classics, uh, the, the material's revolutionary for the genre. Like, and, and realistically, two out of those four albums that we really said weigh it down, they're good. They're all right. They're nothing too crazy, but it's not like blasphemy. It's nothing absolutely shameful or like I can't listen to it. Like Kamikaze and The Death of Slim Shady, like those are albums that still, they're okay. They're nothing nothing that bad. I guess like we, we give him the, the Kanye treatment where we look at, let's say, a revival and we look at, let's say, a music to be murdered by him. Like, okay, it's like a V1, V2 sort of situation, you know? It's tough, bro. It's tough because I, I look at it as like, a sports player who has like five amazing fucking seasons and then the second half of his career, he just, he can't produce the same and he's still uh, competing on. at a high level. But, but let's, okay, hold on. It's like, not, but that's it, kind it, of but, how but we're not talking it. about five seasons though. The guy was dominant from like 99, Loki all the way up to like 2011 with his catalog. And now it's been a decade of mediocrity. Uh, yeah, it has uh, been. Yeah, I think it's, it's been, been a decade I, of mediocrity now. I go amazing with this rating, bro. I, he has an amazing catalog. There's there's things in his catalog that not even like maybe I I don't think that Jay Cole Travis or, or Drake could touch, and, and for me too I think everyone has duds in their catalog. I'll go amazing because the highs do outweigh everything else, but I could see someone making the argument for this being in that same tier as some of the other artists in the great. But I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. cool with that. Let's move on. Next up is Future, who was also in the last. Um, he's actually the last rapper on. Um, this list for the rest of the episode to be on the last tier list. And I think he got a good or a great rating. I'm not too sure. But now yeah. he's just put out one of the best albums in his catalog, and he's followed it up with a more R&B-driven album with We Still Don't Trust You, and he put out Mixtape Pluto. People are harking this back to 2015, saying that he's gone on another generational run. I think we got to pump the brakes on that. No. This is not another generational but run. But it recaptured that feeling, though, of him coming in and being dominant and, yep. and dominating the sound for 2024. Regardless of the quality of the projects, you can't argue what he's done this year. No, it, it, it is about the, the quality of the projects. I, 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 a lot of artists can put out three, four albums in a year and we could say, oh, they're releasing this much, they're dominant. I don't like, think that, you just That's cool and all, I, I just but said it's the, about the quality of the project. Yes, I agree with you. It's not 2015 quality, but it replicates a certain feeling that you got in 2015 where like a lot of future songs were dominating the airways and a lot of his material was the main staple and soundtrack for your life within that within that era thinking about we don't trust you we still don't trust you even mixtape pluto i've been bumping it like he's given you so much volume this year to the point to where like you can't escape his sound now that doesn't um take away from the fact that on mixtape pluto there's bloat there's songs that aren't finished you know it has mixtape quality we gave it a good rating for a reason mm -hmm. it's nothing special um with, with we still don't trust you i gave it a good rating because it was the same vibe for me no matter how strong the second part was you still got songs in there that i don't know i feel like don't belong in futures catalog so it's up for debate but this year alone right looking back at i ever liked you looking back at the wizard looking high off back, life uh, high off life right mm. do you look at those and you'd be like oh that weighs it down or to be like I, there's quality within there but it's kind of in limbo like i don't give a fuck you know yeah, I mean, listen, what's interesting is that for myself and I feel like for a lot of future fans, mm -hmm. besides a handful of albums, we treat most of his projects like playlists, right? Where it's like you're going to get your batch of bangers and you're, you're going to get your songs that you kind of just forget about. And that's what I feel like has been the latest trend with um, the late 2010s run of like Wizard of High Off Life carrying into the 2020s with I Never Liked You where... 
There's a handful of bangers. It's Future doing what he does best, finding these um, hardcore, hard-hitting, dark trap beats mm-hmm. with sometimes really dope samples like you'll get on 7, 12 p.m. that really add this grandiose cinematic effect to his production. And you're getting some tight flows. You're getting some catchy hooks at times. Like, he's never, like... I want to say this about Future. He never really had the greatest evolution catalog wise but it's always been consistent it's been pretty consistent yeah the yeah. product is so potent yeah. it's like why change the formula yeah this guy just knows how to move music and that's what i think is so strong with his catalog is like not only is a revolutionary because you could say that his catalog has contributed into a to a, a massive fucking switch um to hip-hop music right that's completely shifted the landscape of it but you could also say that, dude, there's a lot of fantastic projects in this guy's catalog. 56 Nights, DS2, self-titled, I never, uh, We Don't Trust You. Like, you have projects in there. Monster. That, like, you, you have mm-hmm. projects in there, dude. Like, there's serious some, projects, There's some yeah. serious fucking projects Listen, in there. Listen, the, the highest I can go is great, and even me putting him on great feels a bit strange because, to me, it doesn't have the catalog of a Travis, of a J. Cole, of a Drake. It's not on, on quite on that level for me. But... I get it, right? He has, yes, a, he has the a couple only thing classics. See, He's only, consistent. I get his it. really mixtape catalog, especially the first installments of like Pluto. Let's say, like, I'm not too crazy about it. It's kind of like an Al Farrell situation for me, where you're still trying to find this sound, you're still trying to polish it. They're very raw, so I don't know. I guess that weighs it down a ton. But it's like Beast Mode Two is an average mixtape. Like he doesn't have I, I, nothing, I, I, but. I don't think you could just call his catalog good. I think it's a great catalog. I think it's impactful. I, I think he has classic albums. Um, and you know what, bro? The longevity is kind of low-key and match since 2014, bro. This guy's been fucking doing it for a decade at this point. And like you said, there's not much evolution, but he's been ripping it. Yeah, great is okay. Like I said, though, not quite in the level of the there's other There's an greats. asterisk yeah. next to the great. Yeah, it's like almost good, but not quite. Next up, ASAP Rocky. We move on to new rappers that have never been ranked in this tier list before. With Rocky, it's been a very interesting discography because of how small it is. Like He's been around for the same amount of time as some of our favorites from the 2010s decade, but it has like half the catalog that he's a lot of them He's been very intentional with his output. Yeah, he has been. And, and I think that's a strong suit of his, to be honest with you, because realistically, he's never missed on a studio album. Um, the album that kind of gets the most scrutiny is something like a testing, but regardless, there's full of quality within that studio album experience classic mixtape to his name i think at long last asap's a fucking masterpiece bro like you guys know how much i hold that album to a high regard um that contemporary rock sound that he was exploring within that 2015 time like there was no music that was sounding like that but bringing new artists to the table like a joe fox you know iconic records off of that album like it is that is a complete hip-hop album experience um there's no album that will ever feel that way and yeah i just i've always loved the balance within rocky projects where you know, you go to something like, a, let's say, a testing, and you'll have your bangers of the album that will dominate the airwaves, like a Praise the Lord, looking at an ASAP Forever remix. And then you'll also have, like, your um, your psychedelic, groundbreaking songs, like a Fuck Sleep, um, like a Purity that just sounds so unique and so original compared to what the rest of the mainstream is doing. And that's been consistent throughout the catalog, and I've always admired that. His world about building Rocky. is top-notch as well. Yeah. Um, great year for production, or should I say amazing year for production. Mm-hmm. Even what his sound means to like the landscape of hip hop, where he took cloud rap and like, you know, how it, like he was obviously inspired by rappers like Max B, for example, and bringing that whole new sound to the mainstream. But the way that he mixed that in with like Southern hip hop and, you know, brought in that new Clams Casino sound. And then, you know, the way that he was able to even push that forward into like his new studio albums and the evolution, like he's done almost everything, bro. This guy has shown you so many different angles of himself. It's hard to put him in a box. So this is my thing is that if, um, if Long Live ASAP and Testing were on the same level of Live Love ASAP and a Long Last ASAP, then you can make the push for Amazing. But it's not quite there. No. It, it's, it's great it's, it's at a best. Gra- it's a great catalog yeah. at the same time. Yeah. I think it's on the same level as... A, honestly, hot take, I think it's on the same level as a J. Cole or Drake catalog. Yeah, it, it, it's quite he's, around there. Just that it's he's like... Miss, uh, he's missing the volume. He's missing the volume. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. But, all missing, right. but at the same time, though, it kind of works to his advantage. Like, Rocky's a weird case, though, with his catalog. Because it's like, what do you value? You know, mm-hmm. as a Rocky fan, I've, I value 
the time he's taken with his catalog. It's fucking intentional. He's never conformed to music trends. Like he doesn't give a fuck. For bro. sure I do, but he's reaching a point now that just like Tra- drop just it. like Travis Scott with Utopia, this next album is so crucial. Like this next album needs to be fantastic. It needs to be better than testing. Um just because it's the longest we've ever had to wait. So we'll see what ends up happening with Don't Be Dumb and if it changes any of our thoughts on that. But next up, 21 Savage on the list, something that I've always praised. 21 4 and you guys know that i've been rocking with 21 literally since 2016 you've been since a diehard yeah rocky. i've been a diehard not rocky uh, 21 diehard six. 21 fan like since um he was really a nobody with barely any monthly listeners um i really caught on to him early and i've always appreciated what 21 brought to the to the trap game where he made you feel like you were listening to jason Voorhees, like just this this creepy dark guy that's around the neighborhood Crazy. who's gonna come and and wreak havoc like just he he knew what um what box to play into in terms of which producers to link up to, with, with and which soundscape oh shit hold it's on a gonna, second yeah you gotta take out yours eh yeah it's because my laptop's at four i'm taking care of the scores i agree with you though um i think it's interesting right because you look at let's say um the output right i feel like his solo studio albums um i'd give i am greater than i was a great rating is as low-key mid it is a, yeah, it's, it's a mid-album. And then American Dream's a great or a good album, depending on how you see it. So the solo studio album stuff, it's nothing too crazy, but it's fun. It's fun to listen to. Um, there's not much experimentation or evolution throughout the catalog as well. Um, we kind of know what 21 Savage does best, and he plays on that. You know, he doesn't give a fuck, bro. He's going to rip it. There's no evolution, though. I think he's actually had quite a nice evolution. Like, well, yes. bro, bro, if you told yeah. me back in 2016 that 21 Savage would be making a song like All of Me, I'd be like, what the fuck? Are you serious? Or collaborating with like The Weeknd and, and whatever. Like, he gonna... has really um, uh, okay, let me shot that. above his weight class in terms of what people expected for 21. Like, if from a Penn standpoint, getting shit like 3 a.m. in Glenwood, even if sonically I'm not a big fan of that song. He's really expanded. Yes. Okay, but let me make this argument, though. His solo studio album material has kind of stayed one note, though. It's kind of stayed one note to a certain extent. I mean, not necessarily, just because, again, comparing something like a Savage Mode and a Savage Mode 2. Solo studio album material. He's, pro- <sighs> he's low-key a product of his producer. Um product of his producer I'm i mean I, I, what do you mean by that like, though? meaning that like i always felt like when he's able to don't, don't say he's man. carried by his production either because he isn't uh, he isn't bro he, listen, he's not listen, he's listen not a song like, like, like red rum that's not a metro beat it's not a metro beat yes but y- you you understand why people are gravitating towards this stuff i think he could get personal with his pen i think that he's a super talented rapper i love his catalog dude i go back to it all the time don't get me wrong has one of the most um memorable cadences in modern hip-hop yes but we're talking about the catalog though i'm sorry the solo studio album stuff is not that impressive oh it's it's, it's pretty impressive i mean american dream i think is going to be an honorable mention for a lot of people as you know one of the better albums of this year year. It is. Listen, I, and I even I, gave I, it a great rating. And I'm giving 21 Savage a good rating. I just don't okay, want you fine. to, to no. say he's a product of his production and that he hasn't evolved in but his catalog. You, but you that, those are false statements. Yes, but you take out Metro Boomin out of that picture, bro. There's a huge chunk that's missing from his output and that's missing to his artistry. In my opinion, at least. You take out with a warning, I, Savage Mode. I, 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 I disagree like, because a lot of his strong uh, performances are not even over Metro Boomin beats, bro. For, oh, hold on a second. Looking at, let's say, that, that that collaboration between him and Metro and looking at the records within that. Yes. You, you, I don't want to say the word carried. I'm not saying carried, bro. No. I'm just saying is that, again, I think Metro brought him to a whole different level. And I think that it's as clear as fucking day. Uh, I don't think it's I that think big that of a knock, well, but I'm just saying when you compare... They kind of rose together, though. Like, Metro Boom and, like, it was getting, obviously, a lot of light before working with 21. But that link up with 21, like, they became... This big duo, and for once, like Metro now had a face. He was popping up in the videos, like it was it was a different feel. Yes, but at the same time, look at a Metro and Future. Look at let's say a Metro and even someone like a Young Thug, for example. With Metro and Twenty One Savage, it's so hard to find another producer that's on that same level for Twenty One Savage and the output he's able to get out of him. That's the way that I feel about Twenty One Savage's sound. The catalog that he has with Metro is so much further superior than the solo catalog, and it's a big gap. That's all I'm saying. 
That's why I think it's a good I, I, I don't think there's a massive gap between something oh, like bro. Savage Mode 2 and American Dream. There's not a massive oh, gap. There's a there. huge gap there. Not a huge oh, gap. Are you fucking kidding me? The, cinema, no. the, the cinematic value of that project's amazing. It's on a completely okay. different level. And, and, and the idea of 21 actually bringing a concept to an album like American Dream, I mean, listen, it wasn't the, the, the best fleshed out concept album. It's not like you're getting a Lupe Fiasco concept album, but it was his most personal body of work, and he didn't have to rely on Metro Boomin to carry that out. He just, didn't. Yeah, just to close this conversation, though, we'll agree on the good rating. Yes, I'm will. just saying Savage Mode, Savage Mode 2, um, even looking at the performances on Heroes and Villains and on Not All Heroes Wear Capes, and even looking at something like Without Warning, to me, there's a big gap between there and what you're getting from albums like Issa, I Am Greater Than I Was, and American Dream. I disagree, That's just my I disagree when you look That's at the opinion. quality of albums like I Am Greater Than I Was and um, American Dream. Let's go on now to Juice World, And this is um, a bit tough to put into a tier list in the sense that like close to half of his catalog consists of a posthumous material. That's it. So what do you really want to grade here? Because at the end of the day, you could look at, let's say, Goodbye and Good Riddance. Some kids consider that a classic. Mm -hmm. Some kids look at that and be like, dude, th that's, a, that's a serious fucking album. And I agree with them. I look at you. Now you look at something like Death Race for Love, you and I argue that it's a bit overrated. Yeah. It's a bit overrated. It is. And I, I think Legends Never Die is, um, it's a cool album. It was a well put together posthumous album just because um, Juice had the chance to complete a lot of those songs while That's why still it still here. feels like that, that's, feels, a, yeah. that's a product of his artistry. It is, absolutely. And, and it's so hard to grade this catalog. But at the same time, like... You know, it's a good catalog. To it, me. It's a good catalog. I, I wouldn't go put it into the great category with, let's say, a future, a Travis, um, a Cole, or a Drake, but it had a massive impact. It had a massive impact, and I think that um, it really pushed the success of of melodic rap. I mean, again, I don't think that it was groundbreaking in the sense that it brought like auto crooning over trap beats to another level because that was that was done before, if we're being honest. But I just think that obviously Juice World is one of the most beloved rappers of our time and um it was for good reason. There's there's he a made, lot of solid tracks. He in made those yeah, he made a lot of personal um cuts for his fan base and mm -hmm. people are living with those messages till this day. Yeah. Um, people felt like, hey, he could have low-key been a pop star. He could have been a pop star with the way that he was able to lay down his vocals. His singing performances were always great. He was as great as a freestyle as he was a singer. The talent range that he had was on a completely different level. Absolutely. And he was able to work with anyone and everyone that you put in the same room with him. Like, anyone, bro. How are you, like, let's say making, um, I don't know. Uh, how how, how are you making with... a song like Lucid Dreams in, like, fucking 15 minutes? How are you crafting a song like that? in that amount of time like he was yeah his talent was uh, unmatched and i do want to say this i have to give him credit for goodbye and good riddance because there was so much intentionality behind that project and the way yeah. that he sequenced it having one phase of the album be about the heartbreak another phase representing something else like it was really well put together um good the good discography next up metro boomin obviously not a rapper um but has a catalog that's you know on the level of some of the rappers on this list if not better and I thought that it was cool to bring in someone like Metro because he does have um, one of the best producer catalogs in hip-hop history. I, I know it's soon to say that. And I mean that in the sense of actual stu solo studio albums. But not all heroes work. I'm not talking about like placements across the board. I'm talking about his albums, not only collab albums, but also heroes and villains, not all heroes wear capes. Um, phenomenal. The way that he's able to bring together artists... Um, primarily from the trap scene, but also from other genres like a J Balvin, um, like a Wizkid, etc. And be able to cater to them and their stylistic choices. Like, he's blown me away. Again, knowing what Metro was doing with What a Time to Be Alive and the Future Movement and the 21 Movement and then seeing how he was able to flourish and grow as a producer has been a joy to see. And the albums have been reflecting it, bro. But there are some duds. Something like a double or nothing. Perfect timing isn't that solid of an album, if we're being honest. It's good. They're good it's listens, cool. but at the same time, like those are still somewhat yes, underwhelming for his are. catalog in comparison to the rest of his output. Without warning, in our opinion, at least for you, um, flawless is, a, is, a, is a flawless album. So where do you want to go? I think the great rating is is a is a, is a fair enough rating for him. He, he, think about it. Yeah. Without warning, I uh, you know I just keep saying I never liked you. Um, we don't trust you. Savage mode two, the OG Savage mode. Heroes and villains, not all heroes wear capes. Think about the output that this guy's had. Absolutely, it's yeah, stupid. No. It's fucking stupid. 
when it's all said and done, dude, like there's gonna be some serious arguments for him to be. To, are you okay? I can't hear the, the yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just this, this thing keeps falling over, but it's it's fine. I think it's gonna fall over. You gotta grab it there. There we go. Yeah, bring out the power bar. There it is. Boom. Oh, there you go. Oh, now I hear myself. Back in business. Are you? Uh, what's your charging looking like? Yeah, you're kind of fucked. Wow, that's crazy. But my port wasn't even charging. Why? You're you're down. Sheesh. No, I'm still good. I still got juice. Anyways, so where are we going with uh, Metro? What are we doing? Yeah, Metro's gonna go into. Uh, uh, he can go into the great. I'm I'm cool with Metro having a great catalog. Why? You were debating the good. No, it's just like again, like. We're comparing it to other people that are on this tier list, right? And I don't feel like Metro has the discography of a Drake or a Cole or a Travis. Like, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, Actually, good, sir. You know what? I think we should go down to good with Metro. Yeah, but look at the projects that he has. Though. It's solid. It's solid work. Like, I mean, but but again, that being said, like, I don't think that Metro Boomin has a 2014 in his catalog. I don't think he has an Astroworld in his catalog. Like, he makes amazing compilation esque albums said without for a producer. You said without warning. That's it's a one. Album. Th that's one. I you, guess. you said you have, like, if that's what we're talking about. He has the one. Um, again, to me, it's just not on the level of the others. I would go with good with Metro because of the, the nature of this tier list. Uh, I think it's great, bro. No, I think we got to go good with Metro. I really think it's a great catalog. I would go with good. Okay, let's go down to good. All right, Lil I, Baby is next up. What are you going to say? I'd put an asterisk next to that one. Yeah, okay. Um, next up, Lil Baby. When it comes to Baby, I mean, he's never had that great of a catalog, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, even looking back at his earlier projects, harder like than Harder ever. Than Ever. Harder Than Hard. They're cool. They got cool songs on there. I mean, does he have a classic album? Not in my opinion. I think My Turn is one of the most dominant albums of the 2020s. He made an album with a lot of hits. Pretty consist excuse me, consistent project for it being 20 songs. Did, did, has he ever moved the needle with the project? I'd give him the good rating. I, I think good is like, yeah. But it's not even on the same level as a Metro, though. That's the problem. It's here. kind of a mid-catalog, though. I, I'm okay with even giving it the mid just because, sure, you have my turn harder than ever. And what, what is the other one? Harder than hard from 2017, I believe. That's decent and has... Um, Cool songs, cool collaborations with like a money bag. Yo, um, it's, but it's you also not have, that strong because you, also you have, have it's only harder. me. Yeah, but you have a drip harder in there too. And then, but at the same time, you also have a voice of the heroes in there that's kind of like we we, we can go good, and that that's like the best I could. I, that's the furthest I can push this. One. I think it's a good catalog, realistically. It's not a mid catalog. He has important projects in there. Yeah, okay. He has important projects. Let's go. I think I think baby. we fucked up by not putting Metro in, in the great catalog, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, uh, I think I think that's an again double or nothing, perfect timing. Um, it's just it, it weighs it down. Um, but all right, Where Kid Cudi is next. How do you feel about Cudi again? Someone else who has not had the strongest second half. That's kind of like just a recurring theme with a lot of these legendary rappers: is that it starts off strong, and then it kind of has this downfall. So, what are you saying? Hmm. I'm trying to go through the catalog right now and just see, like, where it's at. It's tough, bro. It's because, like, you look at something like Speeding Bullet, for example. Do you really look at something like Speeding Bullet and, like... It's part of the catalog, even if it's not hip-hop. Like, it's it's there. It exists. The Wizard album exists. Insano has some of his worst ever songs on there. Again, I, I think a good catalog. I think he has a good catalog. Yeah, I think it's a good discovery. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of inconsistencies within it. Yeah. Regardless I of the of the classic projects, there's th there's some rough projects in there. Some projects were like, wow, why was this mm -hmm. released? Hundred percent, yeah, good for uh, for Kid Cudi. Even, but he has one of the most iconic like series. Of series is in hip hop, yeah, of course, the Man on the Moon series. But um, yeah, it's just, it's not one filled with classics. It's one filled with a lot of like mediocre albums as well. Um, I don't think In the Cut is a classic album, even though it's it's pretty solid. Um, yeah, so good. Next up, Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert, obviously had a great stretch of mixtapes. Um, leading into Love Is Rage 2, which is arguably his best album, getting some futuristic trap beats on there, getting Uzi giving you um, just a great balance of heartfelt, melodic auto-crooning with, you know, his typical um, sort of like bubblegum, happy-go-lucky, energetic flows. And even message-wise, I feel like Uzi doesn't really get as much credit as he deserves. He has pretty cool messages. He has nice tributes to, to family members throughout Does his he have records. A classic? Debatable. 
debatable. But if you look at Love is Rage 2, like, but some people y- might call it. You know what classic. it is? It's almost, to me, it's like a generational classic where people that really grew up with the SoundCloud era and. Which we did. Which we did. Um, we were in our mid adolescence when that sort of stuff was coming out. Like, we were 17 and, like, we were still going to house parties. We were still, like, having fun in high school. It was a good time, you know? It was a really good time. And he low key had the soundtrack to like our lives, bro. It was stupid. Uzi's influence was stupid. But no, I don't think he has a classic album. Though, I'll be honest with you. Eternal would take. Pink tape wasn't it either. It's a good catalog. Are we looking at um, at the P he dropped before Pink tape as well? It's yeah, a good catalog. Good catalog. I, as I well. think I think it's a good catalog. Yeah, good for Uzi. Okay, so before it was getting filled up with greats, so now the good is getting it's filled making up. Making a run here. Yeah, the, the um, past six rappers, or should I say, artists, because Metro is included in here, has all been good. Okay. All right, let's go on to Jid. Um, when it comes to Jid's catalog, um, similar volume to Rocky, you could say. Um, not as influential or as impactful as someone's someone like Rocky's catalog. I do want to say that. But the consistency has been ridiculous. Um, obviously, not every album has been high-level conceptual. Like, we know that DiCaprio 2 was more jit proving that he was going to be... I'd give an amazing rating to every single one of his projects. Except for Para 2. Para 2 isn't. Um, the original DiCaprio isn't. But again, do we really view that as part of his like main catalog? Yeah, they're, they're good mixtapes, though. Yeah, they're part of it, but they're good mixtapes. Nothing more than that, at least in my opinion. Um, I, I think DiCaprio the- 2 is a great project. I think the Forever Story is amazing. I think the Never Story is amazing as well. I give DC2 um, the amazing rating, bro. What there's else? A, there's a really consistent... like. Well, it's maybe one of the least consistent of his catalog, but regardless, though, uh, there's a stupid quality on that. Again, I go with a great rating here. I go with a great rating. Getting the great, yeah, I agree with that. I, I think he's building up one of the like the most consistent catalogs in hip-hop history. The intentionality behind it. Like you said, it's kind of a similar vibe to Rocky. Mm-hmm. I go great rating on yeah, this one. Yeah, great for Jid. Next up, we got Denzel Curry. And yeah, with Denzel, I mean, is there a more consistent man in hip-hop? I mean, this guy has been killing it for so long at and this And there's point, such bro. range to his catalog as well. He has this release system where he drops um, an album that's super meaningful. There's like this beautiful intention behind it. It feels like a magnum opus example, like an imperial, a taboo, and melt my eyes. And then in between those projects, you get um, these super fun, loose end sort of albums that have a sort of influence to it and that he pays homage to the South with. So, for example, like a zoo, um, like a Kings of the Mischievous South. Like, So, I don't know, like... Where do you want to have the nitpicks with his catalog, right? You could say that those projects are maybe not on the level of uh, a taboo or melt my eyes, but still, like, he has some serious albums. Like, there's some serious material in there. And yeah, in terms of, like, consistency, I think he um, has been more consistent than uh, some of the artists in that great tier, you could argue. And maybe he doesn't have the same amount of classics as those other artists, but... Um, yeah, this is the definition of a, of a pure album artist. You know, Him we're, 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 we're going to yeah. see people on this list that aren't and that are. He is a definition of an album artist. He is definitely in the great tier. And I wouldn't be mad if someone tried to make the argument for him being in the amazing tier for his catalog. Like, that's valid. But we're, we're kind of being hard asses with this tier list. You know what I mean? But in terms of, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, in terms of being strict it. with it, you know? Absolutely. But okay, let's keep going on with this. By the way, uh, Denzel's going into great, right? Absolutely. Let's go on to YB. Um, Someone who, you know, decides to fucking feed the fan base every time he wakes up in the morning. It feels like every day there's a new YB album. And I do want to say this. This past year has been a bit slower for YB releases. Um, Maybe he's understanding that there's not that much of a feeling of an eventful experience when it comes to a new YB album just because of the frequency of them all. Um, but that being said, I can't remember the last time I sat down and enjoyed a Young Boy album. I can't. Yeah, Young Boy 2 probably. Yeah, which is what, like six years ago? And he's dropped so much since then. 2017, yeah. I felt like you were getting three studio albums a year. Um, the consistency and the tracking has been, you know, close to none. And I think it's a shame, though, because he kind of probably developed his artistry into a different place, you know? And it's just like, for him, it was like, okay, let's just fucking, let's get it out of here. Let's just boom, 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 boom. And I and I find that kind of a, a hard approach to buy into because at the end of the day, like, you, you know the model of the catalog and you understand what you're getting, right? I think it's a bad catalog. It's, it's a really bad catalog. And, and I think it's just because 
it saddens me to say because I do think he's talented and skilled in so many aspects, but it's a case of him playing the conveyor belt game instead of really focusing on his artistry and um, making projects that really feature um, inspiration from new lived experiences and um, new creative inspiration sonically. Like, it just seems like... Um, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's a cash grab a lot of the times. That's what it feels like, bro. I'm, I'm going to put it bluntly. Yeah. Um, all right. So bad catalog for YB, the first bad of the day. Might be the only bad. We'll see. Next up, we got Don Tolliver. And Don T has been uh, on a pretty decent run, I want to say. Yeah. You know, since breaking onto the scene. I think he's um, escaped the, the feature artist allegations. I think so. Uh, uh, especially this after time, yeah, he's, de he's developed his own sound. He's developed his own studio album experiences. Um, I, I think he has great albums in his catalog. Life of a Dawn and even at something like a, like a Hearthstone Psycho, I think those are really solid projects. He has, and I think he's reached the point where now we're seeing he's doing these arena tours, and it's not just because he has four or five songs that are mega hits. No, it's because people love the album experiences that he provides. And One of the most talented vocalists, too. Like The catalog has so much quality when it comes to production, when it comes to vocals. It's so unique. It yeah. feels like a like a different experience from anything else that you're gonna get. Still lacking um, a classic album, without a doubt. I think he's I think he's lacking an amazing. I think he's album lacking too. an amazing album too. That's it. So the highs are not very high, but yet he's been somewhat consistent. But, somewhat consistent, but even something though like, you do have like a, a love like a love sick. Yes. yes, I think love sick is a big dud. And this, I think this is a good a good a good. Discography. I think it's a good, I think it's a good discography. I agree with you. Um, I think the move of him coming back so soon with quality after love sick, he knew you have to mm -hmm. know. You have to know. Yeah, he read that play really he, well. And it was just beautiful, bro. The way that he transitioned into that. Such a sick artist. Yeah, bringing in some Tame Impala sample flips, bringing in this more punk aesthetic. Like, it was it was dope to see from, uh, from Dante. Um, and yeah, I, I felt like that transition felt seamless because of also the world building with that album was really great. And that's something I value too when it comes to catalogs. But next up, we got our boy Noah. We got Yeet. <laughs> Yeet, has cool, yeah. Yeet has entered the chat. <laughs> Okay, um, I know where you're going with this, bro. Listen, man. I mean, and, and by the way, lifestyle is not out yet. By the time we're recording this, so lifestyle has not been um, has not graced our ears at this point in time. Um, I don't think it's gonna change anything, though. Yeah, it might not change anything, just because you kind of know what to expect with the Yeet album at this point. I mean, you could say that. 2093 was a cool twist because you got. This more futuristic, psychedelic, hardcore trap um, production that felt new for Yeet. You can make those claims. Um, but that being said, in terms of song structure, from album to album, there really hasn't been that many switch-ups. In terms of um, just vocal presence, sure, he likes to alter his pitch. He likes to go higher. He likes to go lower. But he likes to go higher. He likes to go lower. I mean... What what can I say about Yeet, right? Afterlife, uh, Life, Too Alive, Up to the Me. The albums are too long, bro. I, I can't listen. I cannot listen to a, a single Yeet album without me wanting to take a break or fucking just contemplate like why I'm even listening to the album. I mean, I have a hard time. We got Yeet's three different versions of 2093. It's a mid catalog. It's not as bad as YB's. It's not as bad as YB's. Um. I'd give it a mid range. It does break. feel like he he tries to experiment at certain points with the catalog, um, but vocally though, and tonality behind his music, like, uh, it's tough, bro. It is tough. That's a that's a tough conversation to be having. It's really tough. Yeah, uh, I mid. I it, think it, it, is a a, it is a mid catalog overall. Um, all right, let's go on to Roddy Rich, who came onto the scene and had a lot of promise for a lot of people. A lot of people, us included, even made the prediction that he might be one of this generation's superstars, that he might have this fruitful career that, um, you know, is really special. But the catalog just hasn't developed in that way. Um, obviously, the Feed the Streets tapes are really cool just because you had that OG um, gospel sound from Roddy Rich, yeah, you sounding super soulful. You had a huge debut album with Please Excuse Me that featured a bunch of bangers. But then, yeah, it gets tough. It, it's, yeah. it, it starts to get tough after that. Yeah. I will say this, though. The Feed the Streets 3 installment was decent. It was good. It was okay. It was all right. It, was it wasn't okay. anything too crazy, but Live Obviously, Life Fast. Obviously, Live Life bro. Fast was a disaster. Um, and and it was unfortunate because, was, 
Yeah, it was almost it was like an over two year wait, and um, it was a regression for Roddy instead of it being an evolution like we expected it to be, and it just felt like maybe he ha like the whole point was him saying I had to live more of my life to be able to put this album out, and instead um, the lyrics were so shallow, the production um, was very generic, there was just nowhere for him to go. Um, this is a mid catalog for me, if I'm being honest with you. Name me a bigger like blue ball than getting this album, especially with fucking getting the marketing behind it. No, there there wasn't, bro. It was so disappointing. Because he really geared like this album to be cinematic, to have this mature writing. It was actually was it the first ever live album reaction that we did on the Patreon? It was. It was the first wow. ever, bro. We were excited that night, man. That was a huge album experience yeah. for sure. But like you said, man. It's not it. It's not. It's, it's going to yeah, the mid. That's going into the mid category. All right, Schoolboy Q, here we go. Um, he's, what a special discovery. Yeah, and he's spoken about his catalog. Do you agree with his ranking? I really do. I, I think that Crash Talk was definitely him trying to climb the charts and um, maybe get a number one song with Chopsticks, which obviously didn't pan out how um, he, he wanted. wanted. Um, that being said, I think that Q, again, is someone that puts so much intentionality behind his albums, builds worlds around his albums um and again is someone that isn't afraid to push himself to new limits when it comes to that umbrella of gangster rap and how experimental he's proven to be how he's brought in so many of the traditional aspects of hip-hop albums that i feel like we're lacking when it comes to storytelling when it comes to having visuals that further immerse you into the universe the artist is trying to build when it comes to having one song that connects to another not only through tr seamless transitions at certain points but also from themes and other things like schoolboy q is someone that that gets it bro he, he understands gets it he understands blind face is a classic I, I i think it is I, I like to believe that it is Blue Lips is going to go down as one of the best albums of this decade. Yeah, it very well could. Top 10 at least, probably. Is it still album of the year for you at this point in time? I, I will not reveal such things. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, it's true. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're, yeah. we're getting close. And, and I have to reassess my list, actually, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, That's yeah. true. I got to revisit the, the rankings. I, I got to revisit but some albums. But yeah, this, this do, is yeah, great. This, this is, is great. a great catalog. Yeah. Um. I like projects like Setbacks, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. They're not bad, yeah. I like them. Yeah. Even if Oxymoron, still that album, has like sort of a commercial appeal to it as well. He said he was doing records for Best Buy. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to Best Buy, I guess, and I'm fucking buying. Fuck I'm yeah. there. I, I love that album. I really do. Yeah, it's it's a great fucking rating. That's for All sure. All right, Mr. The, the Baby. Baby. Here we go. <laughs> Listen, man. I knew. I knew from the jump. Yeah, I fucking, know. yeah. You, you smelled it. I, I was always proud to, to be... Uh, to be early on, knowing that the baby wasn't going to be able to, to, to do much. And to sustain, yeah, that as well. I mean, listen, bro, I don't know where to go with this. I know you like an album like Kirk. I think it's cool. I wasn't even really a big fan of that project either. I like Kirk I, and I, Baby I'm, I'm on trying baby. to look at what we could defend here to maybe boost it up from a bad, if that's possible. It's a bad catalog. It's a bad catalog, bro. It's a bad catalog. We can't I'm escape gonna, it. Yeah. Like, bro, Kirk and Baby on Baby are good at best. If you're being generous. If you're being... But... Uh, no, no way. Some of the worst production value you can find on an album. I mean, I'm sorry to Jetson. I think Jetson has made some some fire production, but not when not when he's cooking for the baby. Bro should no longer be cooking for the baby. I mean, I think it was just over saturation at a certain point, bro. There was so much being blasted at you from 2018 into 2020. It was like, dude, I'm getting the same fucking flows, getting the same content matter. I think he's a talented rapper. I think when he, really, when he really wants to, he'll fucking shred the mic. Bro, I can count on it. two hands how many like fucking solid verses the baby has put out. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Count on two hands. It's bad. I think, I think that's a bit rough, but I think he's a talented rapper. I think there's still talent within there. But it's a bad catalog. Yeah. The output you can't defend it. Vince Staples. Again, this makes me think back to Jid and the Denzel Curries of the world where they might not have... That unanimous classic that the whole world knows and reveres. But that being said, they have maybe what you would call underground classics. And more importantly, the consistency from Vince Staples. Summertime 06, FM, self-titled, Ramona Park, Dark Times. No, it's stupid quality all around. Absolutely. And what I love about Vince as well is that 
right on a big fish theory he proved like well fuck it you're not gonna put me in this box of making um of making west coast music only like no i'm gonna bring in sounds and styles from other regions i'm gonna bring in um some techno and house sounds and rap over these beats and show you what i'm capable of and then going on to um something like dark times as well showing that he can make these pure like singer songwriter songs and um it's, it's he's just done been, it all yeah he's done it all it, it's been he's incredible so talented, to witness. bro he's such a talented artist it, it's really it's second to none i think it's a great fucking catalog again same level as jid same level as denzel for me yeah that's where i would put it i put it in the great catalog it is sure. a great catalog miss ice spice but you see it's just it's fucking it's it's so hard for me to say because it's like with eminem Sure, you have the three highest highs, but no. it's like Vince Staples' catalog has been so much more consistent. But anyways, uh, it's it, it's tough. It's tough to assess certain Yeah, but things. when you have those three albums, I know. sometimes you I just got to say fuck it. I know, I know. Like, bro, like it, it's three, uh, come on. Three masterpieces, and he, I know. And he had longevity, bro. He did. I don't, give a fu- I don't give a fuck what anyone tells 100%. me. He had it, bro. All right. right, Ice Spice. Straight to perfect. What are we saying here? Ice of Spice? <laughs> Listen, th- this one's interesting because unlike any other artist here, she has one album. So you're, you're pretty much... Though. she has. You're right. You know what? We're going to count um, like question mark in this. Fuck it. Why wouldn't we? Yeah. Of course we are. I mean, listen, bro. We, we know where we're going. What is there to say? I, I feel like everything's Does it break your heart? Turn. It breaks my heart. Yeah. But I think her, her career took a rough turn this year, bro. It, it did. It, it took a really rough turn, but not not maybe for her money or for like her success, as what I think she's doing as like a a, a business person, whatever the case may be. That's completely separate from this. But like a boy's a liar part two, like that's pretty solid. That's not bad, bro. Like you One can't song. Say, but that's what I'm trying to say though is that like maybe she, if she would have tried to go down that lane, try to like at least get something else going, go into like the bedroom pop area, try to at least develop her sound a bit fine. But, like, what value are you getting out of this fucking catalog? You're not. You can't even count the song. Literally, Boys of Liar Part 2, and that, that's not even her song, is it? It's not. It's Pink, Pink Panther S's, is, yeah. Bad. Yeah, it's a bad, bad catalog. catalog. All right, next up, JPEG Mafia um, has a lengthy discography. Dates all the way back to the 2010s. You got EPs, you got mixtapes, you got albums. There's some um, shit that you can't even find on websites. Yeah. It, like, hidden in hard those. drives, bro. And you like, gotta go on, like, Bandcamp, and you gotta go on all these crazy music nerd websites to And I to love it, though. I love the it, it is cool. Th- th- that's, it is cool. Th- that's his clientele. That's the domain. And I'm one of them. And Absolutely. I enjoy it. I think he's made some of the most avant-garde hip-hop music that we've gotten in the last decade. I mean, he's someone that started off making more abrasive industrial hip-hop and then expanded his sound um, and style over the years, um, experimenting more with auto-crooning and just being as eccentric and as left-field as he could be, but always making sure that um, you enjoy the ride along the way. Of course you do. Um, the and unpredictability factor of what he's going to bring course. to the table from studio album to studio album experience. I feel like he's gotten a lot better over the years as well. His sound has just continued to develop, but he's never really sacrificed that unpredictability factor. You yeah, know? bro. And like the production. Like I, I Lay My Life Down, for example, that album is so fucking sick for 2024 because you could make the argument that it's low-key like a step up for him. It is. From LP. And and that's a hard step up to make. Like, LP has great quality within it. Now, uh, for example, like a studio album like a studio album like Veteran. I think it's cool. Do I think it's on the level of, of an LP or I Lay My Life Down? No. In my opinion, at least. From my rotation and from what I expect from Peggy. Cornballs, I feel like that's a bit overrated. It is a bit overrated I as find an it, album, I even feel though people like, really love it. I think it's his singing performances that weigh it down there. Um, but yeah, I do agree that like his production has become more expansive, more layered over the years. And it's just amazing to me that after um, being as experimental as he, as he has been his whole career, he still finds ways to make his beats sound fresh and new and still keeps a lot of the, the recipe that made JPEG what we know him to be today where it come, when it comes to like the impulsive writing when it comes to um the goofy flows and um even and the, like the pop the, culture references even like, the vocal effects that he's yeah. putting on top of his voice and like the way that he layers his vocals it's just it's so unique he's masterful when it comes to composition and that's something that is through and through present on all of his albums um this is a great catalog without a doubt i think it's a great catalog as well um, one of the best underground catalogs bro, that you probably have ever seen. For sure. All right, Post Malone. and <laughs> A completely different approach. Yeah. 
It, it's interesting too because unlike any other artist on this list, you could argue that he never really made a full hip hop album. Even going back to Stony, you know, that was post Malone like rapping and like crooning over trap beats mostly, but there was elements of pop in there, there was elements of R and B in there. And then with beer bongs and Bentleys, um, more pop rap, you could say. And then Hollywood's bleeding. He's distancing himself more and more to the point where now with F1 Trillion, he's making a full-on country album. Yeah. Um, and listen, when it comes to Post Malone, it's a case where I was never blown away by an album. I never listened to an album from front to back and you know said, wow, like every single song on here was dope. Um, it was always a case of, again, pulling for, for the playlist, pulling for a radio selection. He was, he was great at making anthems. You yeah, know, that's the way that I kind of feel about his catalog. More of a singles artist um, to me. But at the same time, something like Estonia, it's a really solid album. It's a cool album. It's a really solid album, in my opinion. Even Beer Bongs, like, that's not a, that's not a bad album either. There, there's songs on there that I'll go back to that I really enjoy. So, I don't know. It's up to you, Lou. I, I think that when you grade it from, like, a, it's, hard to, it's hard to grade Post Malone, bro, to be honest with you. Because like you said, uh, uh, the majority of his material now has completely swayed away from hip-hop. So it's like, how do you really grade it? I think you could just well, look you, at... You, you could grade it as a discography outside of hip-hop. Just because he's not only making hip-hop no, albums, you can still grade it as a discography. And um, again, 12 Carat Toothache was was dope to me because he was getting more introspective with the writing on that album. Um with Austin, we went through that album reaction. That was not enjoyable. Um, it felt like a lot of the production was plastic, was um, generic. Ultimately, it was cool to see, I guess, the art artistic transformations he's taken on in his career. But the albums are not very nuanced. Um, the vocal lines are not always the strongest. And lately, it feels like he's lost the sauce for making super catchy records on his latest albums, in my opinion. Um, I would go with the mid rating if I'm being honest with you. Mid rating is a good rating, in my opinion. All right, Polo G. So, um, Lou, where do you want to go, bro? What do you say? What's uh, what, what's going on in Polo G's catalog where you're like, he deserves a good category? Because for me, this is straight. This is straight mid. Yeah, it's straight mid, mid bro. I mean, uh, he's just he's been regressing as an artist. It's interesting because you look at like Die a Legend and you look at. Um, the goat and those are the strongest projects in his whole discography then you go on to his last two albums and it seems like his pen is getting less witty it seems like the production isn't improving after his entire fan base has told him like bro these beats are not gonna cut it anymore like it always makes the production quality always makes the album suffer you have these bland trap beats that are too reliant on these repetitive guitar chords or the classic piano that everyone always talks about. I mean, these are true um, issues with his projects. And it's one-dimensional. Yeah. The, the, the catalog is so one-dimensional. And time and time again, where he has the chance to, let's say, upgrade the catalog, it just falls flat. Even with Hall of Fame, like, you just look at it and, I don't know, you kind of feel like there was a great opportunity there to do a lot of great things with the catalog. But regardless of how I feel um, about his previous work, regardless, it's just like, doesn't have know. a classic album, never had. Even like if you look at some of his best songs like 21, the production quality, once again, it could have been so much more. You could have had a beat switch. You could have had some warmer piano chords to go along with um, his presence on the song. Like there's always been issues with really um, curating music the way it should be to match um, his skill set. So Polo G is going to get the mid rating with this one. All right, let's move on to Kodak because I feel like when you look at his catalog, there's definitely quality in there. Stuff like Painting Pictures, for example. Um, I feel like that's a quality album. Um, but besides that, it's like, what? What are you looking at? Lil Big Pac? Doesn't have a classic album. Most of the time, the albums are filled with skips. And I'll be honest, there's a certain feeling you get of excitement or of hype when one of these artists that's on this list will drop an album. Nowadays, it's reached the point where Kodak has become one of those artists where I won't even blink an eye if I find out an album's coming out. And most of hip-hop doesn't, if we're being honest. And I think it's just because um, there, there's not much going into these projects, bro. It's a mid-catalog, um, in my opinion. I mean, like you said, Lil Big Pac is a great fucking album. Um, that one is close to being skipless. Painting Pictures was the album where he had a bunch of his hits on there, um, like Tunnel Vision, like There He Go, like there was just banger after yeah. banger on there. Um, 
But yeah, I hate to admit it because we've always been big fans of Kodak, but it's a mid discography. It is a mid discography. Let's I be feel, real. If he was a bit more intentional with it, like as the as the years went on, then I'd have been like, okay, but you know, there hasn't been a solid Kodak album probably since like what, twenty eighteen? Yeah. So mid is what Kodak Black is going to do. All get right. Today. Next up, Lupe Fiasco. I mean, man. All you gotta see is an, an artwork of a painting and you know you're getting a fucking classic. Yeah. That's kind of I mean, what the vibes are. Even his recent are. run, bro, with like Samurai and, and Joe Music and Zion, these are such good and well put together projects. Yeah, I mean, obviously, to most people, Food and Liquor is a classic album. Um, it's up for debate if Tetsuo and Youth is. I feel like people view it as his magnum opus, but maybe it's not a classic in the sense that um, it has that impact that other classics do. So that's up for debate. I mean, Lasers does exist, though. You know Lasers what I mean? Does exist. That that is an album that he put out there. Food and liquor exists though. Tetsu it and does. Youth exists. Drill music and Zion exists. So let's be real here. You know, again, great category. Yeah, I, I think I, I think, I, the I, great I think it's the great category as well. I think uh, I think that's the that's the fair placement for him. All right, all right. Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. So I mean, talk about an artist moving with full creative control. That's that's Gambino, bro. He's taking his time. But. Uh, is it is it in the great category? I mean, is it in the great category? Camp was cool, but I mean, it, it almost felt like a parody rap album to a certain degree. Like it was um, very satire based. It was very playful because the internet's a classic. Because the internet is a classic to a lot of people. Yeah, I love the concept behind that one. Um, love the experimentation. I love his vocals on Awaken. Awaken, my love, is another really solid album. Um, three fifteen twenty or Atavista, whatever you want to call that era, um, kind it was of okay. forgettable, yeah. forgettable music. Band those stone in the new world. Kind of saw more of like an alternative R and B approach from Gambino, less rapping based. And it's also gonna be mess um, of tied, a concept album, but it's also tied into like a cinema experience. So I is it though, or is it like an American Dream situation where like the promo for the album is that, but then the movie doesn't actually come out like i don't know if i just i was left confused regardless yeah, i was left confused. <laughs> i was left re- so that's it yeah I, I think it gets the good rating for I, me. I think he gets a good rating to me as well i think this is a catalog that could have been developed in a different way but that's just like that's my opinion right but i yeah. still think out of everyone on this list he's the artist that could have probably had a higher rating with the amount of talent that he has yeah because i've always kind of loved that he's always had like a narrative basis behind a lot of his albums well there's an intention know? right there's a yeah. sound or a sonic push that he's trying to bring to the table so and he's always executed on that but i feel like the execution part maybe has been a bit lackluster mm-hmm. within the past like four years if i'm being honest with yeah. you but all right next the greatest up of all is t- yeah you know miles who has uh three grammy winning albums for album of the year he has two albums that have been inducted into the library of Congress and his 2022 masterpiece, Knock Knock, it's Santa Bitch Part Two, um, has won him the Pulitzer Prize, making him only the second rapper to ever do it. And I think when we do look at it, I mean, it's it's not only us, but it's the the world of art at large that is telling us that he's he's the chosen one, bro. You know, like you, you go through an album like you know certified trash, and it's banger after banger after banger. After banger, apparently Terrence Martin tried to make that uh, production crew, but he just he said he wasn't meant for it. He he denied it. He said, "I just don't think you could hang, not with yeah. artists like us." And I mean, like we know that Kanye was also begging to be on um, a Uno you know, project for a very long time in whatever capacity, if it was going to be um, as an executive producer, if it was to lay down a feature. I mean, Uno you know, did him a solid by you know doing that remix and hopping on stage with him. Apparently, like, you know, actually the track list uh, sequencing of Donda. Yeah. That yeah. was a big play for him as well. So I feel like he has the classics, he has the consistency, he has the quality. And is he, he, he going to get our perfect today? Are we uh, going to give it to him? I don't know if he can give him the perfect, bro. No, we can't do it? I don't know if he can give him the perfect. I, I think <laughs> that he's so above everyone that he'd want to get the bad category. Just to make everyone else feel better, like, just Well, he's so above pity. and beyond. Yeah, he's so above and beyond, yeah. it, right? Like, it's tough, bro. It's really tough. His bro, even at that, his catalog is so lucrative for business people, bro, that they were thinking about putting it on the S and P five hundred, bro. Yeah, I heard about that. I, I did, I did. I mean, listen, it, it pains me to do it, but I guess it's gonna be a bad rating for Mister Miles. And he told us he, he DM'd us before this, and he was like, "Guys, like, I know we got Kanye on here. I can't go over Kanye." 
I can't be. It's it's like it's, 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 it's like the, the, the new kid on the block mentality. He wants to pay respect to the ones that came before. But he knows it's not a good PR for move for like people are not ready to ex- like accept that. You know, yeah. not yet, not yet. But give him some time. You know, maybe if we do like a, a 2025 update, it then he releases like what we know as the next step in a butterfly. Like then we'll be like, okay, like now you guys can't tell us anything. Yeah, yeah. Time will tell. There Time will go. tell, with Mr. Miles. Next up, Meek Mill. And listen, bro, again, Meek Mill has one of those catalogs where it's like there's the first half of the career <laughs> and then there's the second half. It's a soup. Yeah. It's a big soup. Like, I, I do you... want to say this. There was a time when he was coming out with that Dream Chaser series where people were having conversations about him being one of the best of his generation of the 2010s. Like there was seriously those conversations. Well, yeah, he was, he was always rapping like the rent was due, right? Yeah. He was bodying everyone off features. Like, dude, it was stupid. Freestyle no. ability, the aggression, oh, the stupid. rhyme schemes were crazy. Then you go into the studio albums and Dreams and Nightmares was pretty fire. Dreams worth more than money was pretty decent, if I'm being honest with you. But then you have Wins and Losses, which was kind of a mixed bag. You got a big redemption album that I enjoyed for the most part, which was Championships. Um, one of his better albums. Then you get Expensive Pain, though, which is an absolute mess of an album. Um, it's kind of all over the place. It's super inconsistent. One of the most inconsistent we've have on this whole list. What was his uh, album Rick Ross called again? Um, <laughs> shit. I, I don't know, I, yeah, bro. I, I, I'm telling you. I don't know, bro. <laughs> what was that called? I, I ain't going back there. I'll tell you that. What did we give that? We gave that a mid-rating, no? Yeah. Um. What was that called? Hold on. Uh, too good to be true. I guess it really was. I guess <laughs> that link up really was. Um, um, Meek goes into the good category, though. Yeah. I'd give Meek the good rating. Meek, Meek for the mid. Ah, I don't know. Can we do it to him? No, it's a good. No, come on. It's a good catalog, bro. Stop being fucking stupid. Yeah, okay. That's what I was going to say. I thought you said Meek goes into the well, mid. When did I ever say that? You just said Meek goes no, into the mid. No, no, I said good. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, no. Are you? Are you and, and you were even great like, mixed tapes. Tapes. like, ah. Cause I'm like, fuck, is, is he for real? No, this is obviously like good. All right, Benny the Butcher. So there's a time in every live stream where people try to bring in Tana Talk 3 into a trackless versus trackless battle. So if you guys are not familiar with a trackless versus trackless battle, um, anyone that comes in can send in a super chat. And a big thing in our community is people want us to go track for track with two different albums. So example, like a Tana Talk 3 versus something else. And it is so hard to knock Tana Talk 3 for how fucking good this album is. Yeah, so. bro. Benny has just these underground classics like a to Talk 3, like the plugs I met where you're just getting incredible writing about his stints in prison or him painting these pictures of the cold streets of Buffalo over these dark-ass boom-bap beats. And it's quotable after quotable. It's the skipless track list that you're just left wanting more from. Um, so the come-up of Benny was beautiful to witness. Even seeing him get more of his mainstream push you could argue with burden of proof was excellent because you had hip boy alongside for the ride giving you um where i should say like more or less challenging uh, channeling his inner just blaze giving you these luxurious triumphant hip-hop beats um and then benny again sticking to what he does best where it's these aggressive raps where it's these personal anecdotes that he's sharing with the world um amazing coke anthems Tana to talk for you want to go to that album? That was another dope album. I feel like you underrated Tana Talk 4. Maybe I underrated it a little bit, but I mean, we gave it, what was it? An amazing rating. Yeah. We gave it an amazing rating. Um, it's the Def Jam debut album that kind of left me underwhelmed. Even Everybody some of the can mixtapes that he's released this year. Summertime kind of... Butch. Yeah. yeah. It, it seems like he's getting stuck in a bit of a hamster wheel right now. Yeah. He's I'd running in place, you know? I'd go good. He has his quality, um, but he also has his duds. He has his duds. Yeah, good and like almost great. Yeah. Almost, but not quite. Um, but all right. Next up, we have to end off this episode, Ghostface Killer. And bro, like it's really fucked when you think about it because this man is literally part of two of the best catalogs in hip-hop history. Like his own solo catalog yeah. and the Wu-Tang Clan catalog. That is mind-blowing to me. Yeah, it's all fucked. Um, and yeah, bro, I mean, when you look at what Ghost did with Supreme Clientele, what he did with Iron Man, that's two classics in his solo catalog. When you look at even some of the the concept albums he's put out, like 36 Seasons, looking at 12 Reasons to Die, which is like a horror movie but on wax, like this guy has been 
always ele- elevating and putting out consistent album after consistent album. I do want to say that the more recent ones, like Set the Tone, which he dropped um, not too long ago. Haven't been up to par with his older catalog, but at the same time, it's like people people do like get older and tensions do get different. Like It was just cool to see him come back in 2024, but regardless though. we I want to say this though. We're not ranking the Wu-Tang's discography. Uh, I don't We're know. ranking Ghostface Killer. This is Ghostface Killer uh, solo catalog. Know. 100%. No, it is. Why? Why can't we put Wu-Tang in here? Why? Because at that point, you could say, well, why can't we put um, you know, someone that's part of a group? Let's say Kid Cudi. Why can't we put um, the Wizards catalog in here or something? You know what I mean? Like, We could include it, but it's like it's not fair to do that. But at the same time, like for, for Vultures, like... Kanye West and Ty Dolla were considered like a. But those are collab show. albums, though. Like it's different. Like he has a full catalog. Like you, but even with when Wu-Tang. talking, example, talking about Pusha T's catalog, it's almost criminal not to have the conversation about the clips in there. It's not like you see he took a backseat on those albums, bro. Like Ghostface Killer was arguably the most important member Obviously. of that group. I, you know? I, I never challenged that. My point is, is that regardless, if you want to single it out to only his catalog or Wu Tang's, it's amazing. Regardless to me, it is. But it I, is. I include the Wu Tang catalog in there. You could. I mean, you just, bro, if you want. It, it, the contributions are fucking incredible. It's tough, bro. It, it's tough. To, obviously, the, the contributions were incredible. I'm not denying that. I, I literally said he's part of two of the best catalogs in hip hop history. I'm just saying his catalog and the Wu Tang catalog are two separate things. Do you think his solo catalog is as good as someone like, let's say, a Coles, for example? For sure. Absolutely. You can, you can say that. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Even his more like low key shit, like Sour Soul, which is a project with Bad, Bad, Not Good, like so overlooked. Incredible live instrumentation. He has an underrated solo catalog. He's underrated right. solo catalog. Yeah, because a lot of people do absolutely look at the shit. But it's, I'm it's arguably even shit. better than Cole's catalog. You can make that argument too. Like it's special, bro. It's a special catalog. Yeah, I, I think the amazing rating's a fair one. It's a classic catalog, and it's so important yeah. to the genre. Fuck. What All right, an episode, there you eh? go, bro. What an episode, man. I we mean, we went through how many different catalogs? Like thirty something. Yeah. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. So, best and worst take today? What do you think? Best and worst take? I mean, for you, I know you wanted Metro in that great. Um, for myself, I had a hard time with the Eminem, but I respect it and I stand by it. I think it's fair for him to be there. Um, it's just Kendrick being above Kanye is very interesting as well. We're going to see how the, how the how the catalogs progress, bro. You know, that's really what it that's is. It. What about well, you? I don't know. I'm looking at the Eminem pick and I'm like, you know what, bro? He has the best three album run of all time, in my opinion. He has, like, undeniably, like, classics in his catalog. Mm -hmm. He's had longevity. I don't like the conversation of Eminem hasn't had longevity. No. I think even the mediocre run that he's been on, there's still somewhat quality within there. Has the collaboration albums. Mm -hmm. Has the influence, bro. Like, no. And that catalog has inspired so many people on this fucking list, bro. For sure. If you were to go ask, let's say, a J. Cole or a Drake, like, what they think about that catalog, like, I, I, I think they would... They would marvel at it, like we do. You know, you can't. You, you can't disrespect this Eminem catalog. You can't. So, guys, let us know how you feel. Where do we get it right? Where do we get it wrong? And I don't know. Maybe we do a 2025 version of this. Do you think we're going to do another version of this? For Probably. Sure. At some point. Maybe in a year or so or two years from now. Yeah, we'll see. We'll wait with it. But, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Um, if this is your first time um, on the main channel, guys, hit the subscribe button because we're uploading episodes just like this on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.